We've got a listener on the East Coast who uh, recently went to a 10-day Vipassana 10-day meditation course, and I got this email from him, and I wanted to share it with you. Well, James, it disappoints me greatly to report to you that on the morning of the seventh day after the 8 a.m. sitting, I left the Vipassana Meditation Center to return home. Why, you ask? Well, the reasons I could give would be nothing surprising. I just gave in. I stopped trying to observe. I gave in and reacted. Throughout my time there, I took part in this process of taming a wild elephant. I struggled. I learned some of the technique. There were highs and there were lows, and in the end, I did succumb. I had no idea, no in capital letters, I had no idea what kind of foe I was up against until this week. James, I can say with a sincere heart that I gave it all I knew how to give. In the end, I had something of an anxiety attack and would not set foot back in the meditation hall. <laughs> well, we're laughing because we know exactly where this guy was at. Of course, as I sit here typing this, I think I could have toughed it out like I had the, the doubts and anxiety of previous days, but that's easy to say, and I won't measure myself by an imaginary standard. Good for you. So now I'm left to use what I've learned, incomplete though it may be. And when it comes to self-observation, I'm not sure I ever had until this week. Ever had what? Ever had observed himself. I have much, much more work to do. But I feel that I have some direction now, some seriousness. All the books, lectures, classes, groups, podcast, parenthetical material, sorry, pale in comparison to what this actually is. It was capital letters, real work on myself. Though only a partial step, perhaps only a fool would do what I have done. And a fool I may be. And perhaps one day I will be not so foolish. Until then, though, you have a fool's gratitude, such as it may be, for what you have done and what I hope you will continue to do for me and for anyone else who wishes to walk a noble path. This guy failed, and I wish you could fail like that. Because it's not about finishing the 10 days. That's all that ego stuff. Look, I did the 10 day, I think maybe it was the fourth time I did it. Some guy wanted a certificate because he didn't talk for 10 days. He said nobody in his life would believe that. He wanted a certificate. Now I promise you that what that guy who finished the course got out of that course was not the same thing that this guy who didn't finish the course got out of the course. See, I'm not interested in your achievements. I'm interested in your success. And success has nothing to do with your achievements. Success is an inner thing. This guy got a true picture of what he's up against, what his false personality, what his chief feature is like. He got a picture of it. He got a taste of it. He got a smell of it. He got to feel it. He got to experience it. He got to wrestle with it. He got to struggle with it. And it threw him to the mat. It twisted his arm up behind his back and made him cry uncle. But he knows it better now than he would have had he just skated through it, had he not come to that yes-no struggle, that strong, powerful con conflict. Yeah, he went home. He gave up because we could take what we can take. We're not all the same. We don't all come to this the same way. I explained to him when I wrote back to him, I said, look, we've been together 20 years. We've been through a lot of stuff together. We didn't just come to this 10-day meditation course like, oh, well, this is the first thing we've ever done like this. I've been training you for years on how to do what you don't like. I've been training you for years on what self-discipline means, what obedience is. That builds up over time. You may not see it building up, but it does build up. So for that guy, I say, good for you. I call it a success because you see where you are, part of the veil, part of the illusion that we live with has been stripped away. Now, how long will it last? I don't know. By the time this podcast comes out, he may be back to life as usual. That more often is the case than not. And another shock will be needed. Another shock will be necessary. But if he's on the right track, he'll get it. How do I know he'll get it? Because what you want wants you more. What you're moving toward is drawing you toward it. It's not your will that holds you on this path. It's the will of the absolute that holds you on this path. Don't think it's you. It's not you. You are held here by something bigger than you, greater than you. Now, for me, that's a great comfort. For some people, they have to fight. It just makes them fight. Whatever. The sun comes out. 
hits a block of wax, it melts the block of wax, hits a block of clay, it hardens the block of clay. It's the same sun. One softens and melts, the other one hardens, becomes brittle. What do we do? Curse the sun? No. We have to understand that the nature of the block is what determines how it reacts to the sun. We need to change our internal structure. We need to change our machine so that we can react to the sun in a way that is most productive for us. It doesn't mean that melting is the thing or getting hard is the thing. There are times when it's good. You want something that can be used like a block of clay. But there are other times when you want something that can be used like a block of wax. You've got to be flexible. <laughs>